Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is Ryan Knows Tech with techinformed.us. We've got kind of a uh, older, more traditional style uh, video on the channel today. It has been a very hot topic recently, um, at least on my videos. What are my thoughts on the next iPad, the iPad 3? Seems like it's been about three weeks since the iPad 2 came out and since I was making videos, iPad 2 rumor roundups and stuff like that. But it's already uh, January 23rd and it's time to start talking about the iPad 3, I guess. So following those requests that I've gotten, I'm just gonna talk about it, throw my two cents in. Uh, here with some information is eweek.com. I will leave a link to this article where I'm getting these, um, I would say facts, but they're all rumors at this point about the next iPad. So the first thing they're talking about here is Siri on the iPad 3, and I think that's a given. We saw it with the iPhone 4S in um, October, and now it's time to bring that really cool technology that some people loved and then never used and some people still use. And I don't always use it, but it is very simple. If, if nothing else, just the text to speech. Um, say you're writing a text message. You don't want to sit there and type out a paragraph. You press the button, you talk. In two seconds, it transcodes it, transcodes it into text with very good accuracy. Um, I definitely think we'll see that on the iPad 3. It's going to be a great option. I think we're going to see it on the Mac. Uh, it's only a matter of time until they can build their servers up. I know about a third of the time or a fourth of the time, at least for me, when I try to use Siri, it tells me that it can't connect to the network, and that is very, very annoying. Um, so I guess they need to boost up their servers. They kind of tested it on the iPhone 4S. They'll bring iOS 5.1 to the iPad 3. Um, there's a lot of rumors that it will be released on Steve Jobs' birthday, which is in the month of February. I want to say February 27th, 24th, something like that. Uh, so Siri on the iPad 3, you can expect that within the next few months. The second thing they're talking about here is different size screens. Now we've seen this with a bunch of devices. We've seen the, the, traditional, the traditional tablet is around 9, 8, 9, 10 inches. <clears throat> Some people want a smaller one. For me, I think the iPad 2 and the iPad 1, they're about the same size. That's a great size screen. It's comfortable to hold in your hand. It's easy to read content on. It's a decent resolution right now at 1024 by 768. Um, if I had to make a bet, I do not think that we'll see different size screens with the iPad 3. I think it'll be the traditional 10.1 or 9.7, looks like it's 9.7, inch display that we'll see, uh, that we have seen on the iPad 1 and 2. So I don't think you should be getting your hopes up for different size screens. Could be wrong. Third thing, full 3D support. 3D screens, 3D TVs, the stupid glasses. Why is 3D such a big thing right now? I've never had a 3D TV. I've certainly looked at them in Best Buy and electronic stores. And they're cool. But I just don't see Apple making a 3D display right now. Apple, some things they jump right on board with. They're real quick to implement that technology. And some things they let go forever. I mean, iOS... Uh, when it was released was very good. However, it missed a lot of things. The original iPhone was not 3G. It did not have SMS. It did not have copy and paste until iOS 3, I think. Um, so I don't think that 3D support is something they're going to jump onto right away. The glare issues. Would there be a matte iPad 3? I really don't think so. Apple is very big on the, the glossy displays. They look phenomenal. The colors are better on glossy displays. And I think Apple's going to stay with that. I do not see an, an anti-glare matte finish on any future devices from Apple. Uh, unless, of course, you were to put a screen protector on it, which I've done with my iPhone, and it's very nice. Or the MacBook Pros. The 15 and the 17 inch are available with anti-glare high-res displays, which are nice, but really only for outside use, in my opinion. Number five, wireless charging. This is something we started to hear about maybe two years ago, how you could charge a device wirelessly. I remember the power mat. I almost bought one of those from Best Buy two, three years ago. And uh, maybe that's something Apple will jump on board with, and maybe it's not. The 30-pin connector works really well. The iPad sports about a 10-hour battery. I get between 8 and 12 hours, depending on what I do with it. Um, so maybe we'll see that. Maybe we won't. For me, that's definitely not a deal breaker. I don't really care. I only recharge it maybe... Uh, two or three times a month. I don't use it that much. Uh, but for people who are always using it, maybe wireless charging would be big. We'll have to see. Longer battery life. Apple used to do this all the time. They'd come up with a new project. Now you get 10 hours of battery life, like with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now they've dropped it to seven. Maybe the battery technology hasn't changed. Maybe they have just improved their, um, their, their testing of how long they can rate a battery for. But when performance figures are increasing, like they will, we'll see an A6 processor. There's a lot of rumors, I'll talk about that real quick, that the A6 chip will be coming in the iPad 3. 
possibly being a quad core processor of probably a gigahertz that would be underclocked to maybe 667 or 800 megahertz, only time will tell. That will use significantly more power than the current A5 or A5, right, dual core at one gigahertz. So an improved battery, yeah, there'll probably be a better physical battery in the device, but the power that the, that the device is going to be able to utilize is going to use all of that and maybe more of that extra power supplied to the device. Only time will tell, we'll find out next month. Here's something they talked a lot about at CES in January, a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. Gorilla Glass 2, it is incredibly strong uh, glass that is really hard to break and I presume scratch. And that would be welcome with a device like an iPhone or an iPad that you might drop. Uh, it's a pretty big display. If you set something on it, it gets rubbed in. I know I have a couple little scratches in mine, nothing big. Uh, so maybe we'll see that. Greater touch sensitivity, better images. They've got a lot of different claims here. We'll see if Apple's going to adopt that. Number eight, the retina display, the high resolution screen. This was big with the iPad too. We heard a lot about Apple implementing the 300 plus DPI display on that iPad, the iPad 2. And obviously we didn't see it. It's the original resolution of 1024 by 768, which is about 120 something, 130 DPI or so, which is good. But when you get right up to it, you can see every little pixel that makes up that display. And as an iPhone 4 and currently a 4S user, I love the retina display. You can't see one pixel in it, no matter how close you get to it. So I would love to see a high-res display in the iPad 3. Now, we understand that for developers, that's going to be a pain in the ass. You've got to upscale all of your graphics, all of your images to significantly higher resolution. It's going to take more power, but it's going to look amazing. And that's one thing Apple's good at, making things one of many things. Uh, making things look incredible on a display. Physically, they're really good at that. So I would expect a higher resolution iPad display. I don't know if it's going to be 300 DPI. That would be a huge resolution. Graphics would be so big. A gigabyte game would probably go to like 3 gigs with those graphics. So we'll have to see what happens to the retina display. The vibration effect would be big for gaming. You might have the device vibrate like an iPhone, something like that, some feedback. For me, I don't really use it as a gaming device. I don't see it as a big important feature. I'm not a gamer though. I don't know how uh, a, a vibrating device would enhance gameplay or typing. I certainly would not want the tactile feedback or whatever that's called when you hit a key it vibrates. I don't want that. It's going to waste power and it feels like it's going to blow up. Uh, so for me, I don't think it's. I don't think we're going to see it personally. I don't want it. And then the NFC, near field communication. We heard about this with the iPhone 4 and 4s. Um, using the device, Google has a service called Wallet. You can use it to check out. Uh, it uses wireless near-field communication uh, to, to maybe use your device almost as, as a credit card, which would be very cool. And uh, that sounds like something Apple could jump on with. They're trying to be big now, uh, trying to get businesses uh, to use their products, not only consumers, but now businesses um, in the business world. And I think that would be a great feature that businesses would like to see. That is all uh, that this site has about the iPad 3. We may see enhanced Wi-Fi 802.11n. Technically, I think it is 802.11n, but I don't know, I don't remember, honestly, if it sees my N frequency um, uh, wireless network here in my house. So we'll have to see with that. The case, there's something big. Are they gonna change the design that the product is in? I don't think so. If we look at iPhones and iPods, the first generation was always unique. The second generation kind of hung around for the third, so I think we'll see that in the iPad. It's very thin. It's a very powerful product, um, so we'll see. I can't claim right now. I think they'll use the same case. With that, please go ahead and leave your thoughts and your comments about what I have to say and what are you expecting? Are you planning on getting one? I am. I'll probably get the iPad 3, same as I have now, Wi-Fi 32 gig. That'll be good enough for me for a year. Uh, if anybody's interested in purchasing my iPad 2, it is a relatively gently used, it's in very good condition, iPad, I have a smart cover with it, you can have that. Um, PM me anytime in the future and we'll talk monies. And uh, it's a 32 gig Wi-Fi if you're wondering. So those are my thoughts. Uh, RAM, there's something else I should probably talk about. The iPad 2 has, I want to say, 512 megs of RAM. I would love to see that uh, be more competitive and go to a gig. That would be huge for gaming. Uh, multiple applications open at the same time. It would just enhance the performance and uh, how the device snaps. So that'd be good. Apple, you're listening, put a gig of RAM in it, maybe more, we'll see. That A6 processor should uh, have, an, have uh, improved processing power, RAM, and graphics capabilities. So those are my thoughts on the iPad 3. Thank you to eweek.com for the link, uh, for the article, rather, going over what they're expecting and hoping from the iPad 3. Leave your uh, 
information down below, and I'll talk to you a little bit later. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Check me out on Twitter, twitter.com slash Talk to you tomorrow.